But here's the thing. It's forcing me to breathe all night. But I'm not sleeping. I'm not dreaming. I'm not going into deep sleep. I'm never feeling rested. And I'm only sleeping three hours a night. And we're talking years, a year. Well, uh, I'm almost at six years on CPAP. Uh, like four of those years, more than four of those years was spent only sleeping like two hours a night. Two hours every 24 hours. When I got that, when I got to CPAP, I was so ill. I was in medical crisis. I do absolutely believe I was in, in respiratory failure and got the machine and they're like, oh, you're doing great. You're doing immediately. I figured out because they expect, they expect you. Well, I don't know if it was immediate. They expect you not to find out like they, it's like the, the expectation is for you not to figure things out. Right. I figured out this the the machine they can see the data from your CPAP machine at in their office they can see if how many apneas and hypopneas you're have, having but here's the thing you can be wearing the machine for 12 hours and you slept for an hour and a half here's the thing they look at the data and they go oh my god you're so compliant you're doing great oh I, literally oh i wish all my patients were were as compliant as you are look at you good awesome way to go you're such a great patient i slept for two hours what you're looking at is 12 hours of data for 10 of those hours you're thinking that I'm sleeping, but I'm awake for those 10 hours. I'm sleeping two hours. What I figured out is, is the machine can't determine when you're asleep or not. So it looks like you're doing fantastic when actually you're at home fighting for your life. But nobody will assist you. There is no one to, there's no medical advocacy. The doctor will not contribute to the conversation. You figured that out and they're like, well, it looks like you're doing great, but I'm not, I'm fighting for my life. This, this terrifying unwillingness to be helpful. So what I figured out, it, it took me forever because they're trying to tell me I've got a brain disease, right? I need help. This is not sustainable. Living on two or three hours a night is not doable. Any, I, I can't do it anymore. Like, like 10 years ago, 12 years ago, I was sleeping three hours a night. Before that, I was sleeping four hours a night. I, I can't properly ventilate to, to, to stay asleep, to, to, to sleep. So, trying to think of some of the, some of the things. So I'm wondering, so I'm talking to other patients and other patients are going, Oh, well, man, you need APAP. APAP changed my life. APAP changed my life. So me not understanding what APAP is and me being uneducated, I approach the doctor. Okay, well, I need a APAP. Maybe they're not giving me APAP because I don't have the money for, for an APAP machine. So I approached the doctor about APAP. I was like, no, no. I said, F with my lack of drive. See, here's the thing. They will not diagnose the lack of drive to breathe. The lack of drive to breathe is really, really serious. The lack of drive to breathe is, is way more of a serious condition than sleep apnea, than obstructive sleep apnea. Um, and they will not put that on paper. They will not diagnose this. And I do not understand why. And I taught, they won't put supportive words in paper. They will not diagnose this. And 
I spoke to one respirologist and said, why can't you diagnose this? Why can't you? Hey, th I've done everything I could. I've done everything I could. They will not open up a conversation about this. They will not talk about it. Why can't you diagnose my lack of drive to breathe? Why can't you measure it? Why can't you watch how many breaths I'm taking per minute? Because I can be at the point where I'm breathing four times a minute, where I, I should be breathing 12 or 14 to 16 times a minute. I can be breathing four times a minute, nine times a minute, really suffering. And I've done everything I can do. They won't have a conversation about this. Okay, so now you're an uneducated, uneducated patient. You have to try to figure out why won't they have a conversation about this? You're fighting for your life. Why won't they have a conversation about this? What might be the reasons? I can't figure it out. So now more recently I've pushed and pushed and asked questions. Why, why can't you? Well, we, we can't. Do you want to go, do you want to go for another lung function test? I said, no. Well, will it help diagnose the respiratory depression, the hypoventilation, the lack of drive to breathe? Well, I don't know. Well, wh what do you mean you don't know? Or I think he said no. So the lungs aren't diseased. I'm struggling to breathe. It's coming from the brain. Do I want to go for another lung function test? Well, I can sing on top of my lungs. I can blow hard, but I'm struggling to breathe. The lack of drive to breathe. I have a reduced reduced drive to breathe and it's it's to the point where i'm debilitated i'll go if it will help diagnose me and then then so now i have to check every after every specialist i have to check that from that conversation that a derogatory comment hasn't been sent to my family doctor. The report from that conversation, will he have said, well, she didn't feel, she didn't want to go for a, uh, she didn't want to go for a lung function test. She refused a lung function test. When in fact, he knows it's not going to diagnose the respiratory depression, but has it been worded as if I'm, I'm, I'm being difficult or non-compliant.